Good morning, listeners of Hot Topic and Fresh News. Today is March 8, 2024, and we bring you the latest in news. President Biden delivered his State of the Union address yesterday evening, packed with a number of key points and calls to action. Among the guests in attendance were prominent lawmakers, many of whom had their own nonverbal statements to make through attire and accessories. Gun violence, immigration, foreign policy, Roe v. Wade, and climate change were at the forefront of the president's words. House Speaker Mike Johnson criticized the speech as overly partisan, while former President Donald Trump deemed it the worst State of the Union speech ever made. Keep tuning in to Hot Topic and Fresh News as we break down these stories and more, bringing you the most essential information in these critical times. Over to you, David, for the rundown of today's news. Hi there, everyone. I'm Emily, your host. And joining you today is David Newstock. We're here same time every day delivering you the latest news on Hot Topic and Fresh News. Don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on those notifications. This way, you'll never miss out on our daily updates. Now, let's get straight to the hot topics. So, what's the story behind the disruption during the State of the Union address? Well, one notable incident happened when Stephen Nakui, father of a U.S. Marine killed in the Kabul airport attack, was arrested for disrupting the event. Nakui, a guest of Florida Republican Representative Brian Mast, was removed from the House galleries and charged under D.C. Code Section 221307 for crowding, obstructing, or incommoding. And what was the reaction in the House? House Speaker Mike Johnson criticized the president's speech as overly partisan. It seems there's a clear divide in the opinions on the president's address. I see. And what about the GOP response to the State of the Union? Senator Katie Britt, an Alabama Republican, delivered the GOP's rebuttal. At 42, Britt is the youngest Republican woman ever elected to the Senate and the first woman from Alabama to hold the position. Her speech was touted as a tough conversation that Americans need to have. It appears there's a lot to unpack from this State of the Union address. What's your take on this breaking news? Indeed, there is. It's clear that there are significant divides in our political climate, and these events reflect the ongoing tensions. However, such open discussions are crucial for our democracy. It's going to be interesting to see the impact of this on the political scene moving forward. What was the response to President Biden's address from the former President Trump? Former President Trump was quite vocal in his criticism of the speech. He referred to it as the angriest, least compassionate, and worst State of the Union speech ever made. He went as far as mocking the president's appearance and presenting a fact-check style response. What was the substance of Trump's criticisms? Trump rebuked the president's claims on a variety of topics, ranging from IVF to Ukraine, NATO, and the January 6th attack on the Capitol. It appears that the stage is being set for a likely rematch in the upcoming general election. And how did President Biden conclude his address? Despite the criticisms, President Biden ended his speech on an optimistic note. He outlined a vision for the future, including protecting freedoms, ensuring a fair shot for the middle class, tackling the climate crisis, gun violence, and having the wealthy pay a fair share in taxes. He continually emphasized his optimism for the future. I have never really pondered the consequences of this kind of public discourse for our nation. It's definitely a crucial point to consider. The public discourse and the narratives that we engage in significantly influence our national psyche and policy direction. They can either foster unity and progress or further deepen divisions. It's something we should all take seriously. How did President Biden address the criticisms about his age during the speech? Biden took the criticisms head on. He suggested that his age and years in public service have provided him with clarity and an understanding of the American story. He contrasted himself to those he believes want to pull America back to the past, stating his aim is to move America into the future. What about his approach to the Israel-Hamas war? Biden talked about the challenging past five months since the conflict started. 
he reiterated his support for Israel's actions against Hamas, but also emphasized Israel's responsibility to protect innocent civilians in Gaza. He also announced plans to establish a temporary port on the Gaza coast to facilitate the flow of humanitarian aid. It's interesting, isn't it? That his age is simultaneously seen as a disadvantage and yet is also the very thing he credits for his perceived clarity. Yes, it's definitely a unique perspective. People often see age as a limiting factor, but Biden is using it as a strength. He's saying his years have given him a deeper understanding of America's story and its future. Yes, but it also means he brings a lot of historical baggage, which can be both good and bad. It could make it harder for him to adapt to new ideas or trends. That's a valid point, although I don't entirely agree. Experience can also mean wisdom and the ability to handle complex situations. But you're right, it's important to keep an open mind about this. It's okay to disagree. That's what makes these discussions so important and enlightening. I'm glad we can have these open conversations on hot topic and fresh news. Absolutely, it's crucial to have these dialogues. And I'll definitely think more about your point. What did President Biden have to say about the ongoing Israel-Hamas conflict? The president reiterated his belief in a two-state solution as the only path towards peace in the region. This viewpoint reflects his consistent stance on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Moving on to gun violence, did this issue find a place in the president's address? Yes, President Biden passionately addressed gun violence. He mentioned the tragic case of Jackie Cazares, who was killed in a school shooting in Texas this year. He reiterated his call for Congress to act advocating for a ban on assault weapons and high-capacity magazines and calling for stronger background checks. He strongly criticized his predecessor's inaction on this issue. What about immigration? How did the president address this topic? Biden used his remarks on immigration to draw a stark contrast between himself and former President Trump. He emphasized his belief in the diversity and unity of America and stated that he wouldn't demonize immigrants as he claimed his predecessor did. Did President Biden respond to the criticisms from Republicans regarding his border policies? Yes, he did. In fact, he directly addressed the Republicans' rejection of a border security bill, which they claimed was not strict enough. His response indicates his willingness to confront his opponents head on. Continuing with the issues of the border, Biden urged Republicans to look at the facts. He showed readiness to resolve the situation, calling for the border bill to be sent to him. He also addressed Lake and Riley's tragic death in Georgia, expressing his sympathy directly to her parents. What was Biden's take on the child tax credit? The president urged Congress to restore the child tax credit, a measure he approved during the pandemic. He highlighted its role in preventing child hunger and reducing poverty. While there's a deal on a tax package that could expand the credit, its future is currently uncertain. And what about Biden's views on the tax code? Biden emphasized the need for a fair tax code and criticized the previous administration's tax reforms. He dismisses the notion of further tax breaks for the wealthy and large corporations, restating his aim to ensure everyone pays their fair share. So he's reinforcing his commitment to economic equality. Absolutely. He made it clear that he sees tax fairness as essential for investing in healthcare, education, defense, and other areas that contribute to a nation's greatness. He pledged to continue fighting for a fair tax system. Did Biden expand on his tax plans in his address? Yes, he reaffirmed his commitment that those earning less than $400,000 a year will not pay more in federal taxes. Highlighting his proposal for a minimum tax of 25% for billionaires, he stated this could raise more than $360 billion over the next decade. What did Biden have to say about his legislative achievements? He touched on several major accomplishments, including the $1.2 trillion infrastructure package and a law aiming to increase domestic production of semiconductor chips. He also mentioned the historic strike last year that led to a labor agreement with the Detroit Big Three auto manufacturers. How did he address the issue of health care? He focused on the importance of affordable health care, pledging to protect and expand the Affordable Care Act. 
he emphasized his administration's efforts in lowering prescription drug prices. And finally, how did the president sum up the state of the nation? He proudly declared that the State of the Union is strong and getting stronger, attributing the nation's recovery and promising future to the American people. He envisioned a future full of possibilities that we can build together. Did Biden touch on other investment areas in his address? Indeed. He identified several priority areas like reducing prescription drug costs, increasing investment in women's health research, lowering housing expenses, enhancing education, and making college more affordable. And what did he say about the 2024 elections? He expressed confidence in winning the 2024 elections, specifically pointing to reproductive rights as a significant motivating factor for voters. He also pledged to restore Roe v. Wade if the American people elect a Congress supportive of the right to choose. How about the issue of in vitro fertilization? Biden urged Congress to guarantee the right to IVF nationwide. He introduced Latoria Beasley and Kate Cox, two guests impacted by recent decisions involving fertility and abortion. Specifically, he highlighted the Alabama Supreme Court's decision on frozen embryos, which halted IVF services in the state. So what was his stance on the overturning of Roe v. Wade? He strongly criticized the 2022 Supreme Court decision that overturned Roe v. Wade, referencing the ensuing chaos. He also criticized Republicans pushing for a national abortion ban, questioning what other freedoms they might infringe upon in the future. Just as a side note, our discussion is mainly based on an article titled, In Defiant 2024 State of the Union, Biden Fires Opening Salvo in Likely Rematch with Trump. It was published on the 8th of March, 2024, on the CBS News website. The authors of the article are Melissa Quinn, Kaya Hubbard, and Caroline Linton. Are you familiar with this site? Yes, it's a well-established source known for its reliable news coverage. But as always, it's a good practice to verify the information from multiple sources. Well said. Now, let's continue with our discussion. What did Biden say about the Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization case? He quoted from the Supreme Court's decision that ended the constitutional right to abortion. However, he noted the increased electoral and political power of women following the decision, signaling a potential political backlash. He also made some comments about the U.S. Capitol attack, correct? Yes, he emphasized the need to acknowledge the truth about the, Jan the January 6th attack, labeling the lies about the 2020 election as the greatest threat to democracy since the Civil War. And what about foreign aid? Biden urged Congress to pass his foreign aid bill, stating that history is watching and reiterating that the U.S. will not walk away from its commitments. I hear Sweden join NATO. Yes, Biden welcomed Sweden into the NATO alliance, celebrating the strengthening of the organization. What was the overall tone of his speech? He started with a touch of humor, then took a serious tone, warning about the threats to freedom and democracy in America. He emphasized that this is an unprecedented moment in history, akin to the time of President Abraham Lincoln. Personally, I believe Biden's speech was a call to action for Congress and the American people. The urgency and gravity of his address underscore the critical juncture our democracy is at. That's a strong statement. Are you implying our democracy is at a breaking point? Not necessarily at a breaking point, but certainly under significant pressure. The threats to democracy as highlighted by Biden cannot be ignored and need urgent attention. I see my apologies for misunderstanding. That is indeed a valid point. What did Biden say about the current state of freedom and democracy? He stated that both freedom and democracy are under attack at home and overseas, emphasizing the simultaneous threats posed to these crucial principles. Did Biden comment on Trump's stance toward Putin? He criticized his predecessor's approach toward Putin without mentioning Trump directly. Biden characterized this stance as outrageous, dangerous, and unacceptable. How was Biden's entrance into the chamber described? He entered the chamber at 9.16 p.m. to a round of applause from the Democrats present. He shook hands with lawmakers along the aisle and had brief conversations with Senators Joe Manchin and Mitt Romney. Which Supreme Court justices were in attendance? Six of the nine sitting justices attended. 
These included Chief Justice John Roberts and Justices Sonia Sotomayor, Elena Kagan, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Ketanji Brown-Jackson. Retired Justice Anthony Kennedy was also present. Justices Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, and Amy Coney Barrett were absent. Why were Justices Thomas and Alito absent? Both justices have not attended the annual address in recent years. Justice Alito's last attendance was in 2010, when he disagreed with then-President Barack Obama's criticism of a Supreme Court ruling. Justice Thomas noted in the same year that he found the event partisan and uncomfortable. What did Speaker Mike Johnson say ahead of the address? He emphasized the need for decorum and respect for the institution. Despite anticipating disagreement with much of what Biden might say, he stressed the importance of maintaining decorum and having honest dialogue. How did Biden depart for the Capitol? He left the White House in his presidential limousine. Before leaving, he told reporters he was feeling good and playfully asked those gathered on the steps not to jump, stating he needed them. Were the lawmakers making any specific statements with their clothing? Yes, some lawmakers wore yellow and blue to express their solidarity with Ukraine, while others wore blue to support the Israeli hostages. Could you elaborate on the attire of the Democratic Women's Caucus at the address? The members of the Democratic Women's Caucus were wearing white, along with pins that read, Fighting for Reproductive Freedom. This visual statement serves to highlight their ongoing struggle for women's reproductive rights. What about the Republicans? Any distinctive attire on their side? Indeed, some Republicans were wearing white ribbons. These were meant to honor the so-called angel families, or victims of crimes committed by migrants. Also, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene wore a button in memory of Lakin Riley, a young nursing student who was tragically killed. Were there any protests happening during the address? Yes, there were demonstrators protesting Biden's response to the Israel-Hamas war, blocking a road leading to the Capitol. Their signs and t-shirts contain strong messages like, stop US military aid to Israel, and Biden's legacy equals genocide. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you explain that news headline in a different way? Of course. Simply put, a group of protesters gathered near the Capitol to express their dissatisfaction with how Biden handled the conflict between Israel and Hamas. Their attire and signs sent a clear message of their belief that Biden's policies have been detrimental. They were specifically against the U.S. providing military aid to Israel. Who made a surprise appearance at the State of the Union address? George Santos, a former representative who was expelled from the House, was present at the address. He's facing multiple criminal charges related to fraud and false reporting. But House rules still allow him floor privileges under certain conditions. And who were the notable guests at the address? The White House hosted a variety of guests, including IVF patients, gun control activists, civil rights advocates, and recipients of student loan debt relief. Among them was Kate Cox, who made headlines for her struggle to get an abortion in Texas, and Sean Fain, the president of the United Auto Workers Union. Sweden's Prime Minister Ulf Kristersson was also invited. What does the latest CBS News poll indicate about Americans' views? The poll suggests that most Americans perceive the State of the Union as divided. Other common descriptors were declining and weak. However, it's worth noting that their economic outlook has been improving. Could you give us some more insights into the CBS News poll? According to the poll, both Democrats and Republicans describe the country as divided. Republicans, who are generally critical of President Biden, are more likely to describe the state as weak and declining. Despite being more optimistic, few Democrats describe the state of the country as strong. When did the State of the Union address start and how long did it last? The address was scheduled to start at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. The White House did not provide an expected duration for the speech. For context, last year's address lasted one hour and 13 minutes, and the year before that, it was one hour, one minute, and 50 seconds. What can we expect from Biden's address about abortion rights? Biden is expected to speak directly about the role of abortion access in Democratic political victories and promises to restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land if a Democratic Congress is elected. 
He will also address conservatives who celebrated the end of the federal right to an abortion. What statement is President Biden expected to make about Roe v. Wade? He is expected to say that those celebrating the repeal of Roe v. Wade underestimate the power of women in America. He believes that if Americans elect a Congress that supports the right to choose, he will restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land. Will he be making any comments about former President Trump? While he may not directly name Trump, he will be contrasting his presidency with what a Trump presidency would offer. He will speak of embracing freedom, democracy, honesty, decency, and dignity. On the other hand, he will criticize the vision of America sold by the former president, which he describes as one of resentment, revenge, and retribution. How can viewers catch the State of the Union Address? The address will be held at the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Viewers across the nation can tune in to CBS News for live coverage starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And here's something that may surprise you. Before the speech, the former president called on Mr. Biden to immediately terminate the supposed witch hunt against him. It seems that Trump is planning to provide running commentary on Mr. Biden's address on social media. As always, it's a dynamic and electric atmosphere as these political events unfold. Can you give us a preview of some other issues Biden will address in his speech tonight? Based on a preview provided by the White House, President Biden will be addressing extremism, the U.S. economy, the state of democracy, and civil and women's rights in tonight's State of the Union speech. Who else will be covering this event? CBS News will be providing comprehensive coverage of the event. Starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, viewers will get to see the arrivals in the House chamber. From 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern Time, Nora O'Donnell, the anchor and managing editor of CBS Evening News, will be anchoring a special report on President Biden's address and the Republican response. Any final thoughts before we conclude today's segment? Tonight's State of the Union address promises to be a significant political event. It will not only reflect on the status of the nation, but also set the tone for the year ahead in politics. We look forward to sharing our analysis of the address in our next episode. Thanks for tuning in to Hot Topic and Fresh News today. We've delved into the buzz surrounding the upcoming State of the Union address, and it's been a pleasure to break this down with you all. Remember to subscribe and activate those notifications so you never miss a beat. Your support truly means the world to us. Go ahead and share our channel with your circles, WhatsApp, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, or even at the dinner table. And if you liked what you heard, don't hesitate to drop us a comment. And remember, we don't take days off. We're here every day, giving you the latest and most insightful news analysis. And oh, you won't believe what we've got lined up for you. So stick around. We're truly grateful for your time and attention. We can't wait to be back with more news, more insights, and more discussions. Until then, Emily and David. Stay in the loop, keep your eyes on the news, our channel's content will amuse.